Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include EU releases 1.5 billion euro bailout payment to Cyprus Italy may limit eye care services, EU court says Use of anaesthetic for execution might cut supplies And European Union announces compulsory common charger standard Plus, new EU rules mean households will have to separate all rubbish from 2015. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The release from the European Stability Mechanism was agreed by the 17 finance ministers of the Eurogroup earlier this month after Cyprus had enacted stringent measures in return for the loans. The tranche is part of a combined €10 million Euro financing package made with the International Monetary Fund. To get the loan package, the government had to take over major banks and agree to large spending cuts and tax hikes as well as the sale of some state-owned assets. This is the key point. The government took over major banks, locking accounts, installing capital controls and finally helping themselves to funds from deposited savings accounts to satisfy the requirements of the Troika. A simple demonstration of how swift and ruthless the EU and national governments can be when faced with a crisis. The country plunged into crisis in 2012 as Greece's meltdown spread, leaving a number of Cypriot top banks insolvent. The result? Big depositors were forced to accept the Cypriot government helping themselves to funds from their savings accounts. Italy can limit the establishment of optician shops based on population as part of its rights to regulate access to public health services, the EU Court of Justice has ruled. A Sicilian regional law limits the number of optician shops to one per 8,000 residents and states that optician shops must be located at least 300 metres apart. In 2009, however, the local government in Trapani, Sicily, authorised an optician to open a shop in another shop's territory, and the competitor went to court to have this law enforced. This is only the tip of the iceberg, with many public services under threat and dissent amongst the public. More on this topic later in the show. The planned use of a common anaesthetic in a Missouri execution is raising concerns that the anti-death penalty European Union could limit export of the drug, endangering the supply of vital medication used every day in thousands of American hospitals and clinics. The execution, scheduled for October the 23rd, would be the first to use propofol, which is by far the nation's most popular anaesthetic. About 50 million vials are administered annually in some 15,000 locations. That's about four-fifths of all anaesthetic procedures. According to the American Society of Anesthesiologists, propofol is popular because it works quickly and patients wake up faster with fewer side effects such as post-operative nausea. Roughly 85% of the US supply of propofol is made in Europe, where capital punishment is outlawed. Export is controlled by the European Union, which prohibits trading in goods that could be used for execution. The EU is reviewing whether to subject propofol to that rule. In a move that will elicit a cry of it's about time too from the masses, an EU committee has voted unanimously to insist that mobile phone makers operating in member states use the same charging connector. The more quick-witted will have spotted that, with one notable exception, every mobile phone maker has been using the micro USB charging connector standard since the common standard was agreed upon in 2010 anyway. However, this was more of a loose agreement rather than a legal requirement. So, like a teacher not wishing to embarrass the child who has done something naughty, the EU is not singling any firm out. However, we are. It's Apple that is the focus of this EU requirement. Now, with the exception of one or two early Samsung tablets, only Apple has point-blank refused to comply with the EU agreement. And even when it overhauled its charger with the iPhone 5, it opted for another bespoke, non-standard charging design. But finally, the cries of, has anyone got an iPhone charger resonating around the office will become a thing of the past. (music) 
every household in Britain will be expected to separate their recycling into four separate boxes from 2015 under new European Union rules. Councils across England and Wales have been told they have to follow EU guidance that will require paper, metal, glass and plastic to be collected separately. The new rules will raise fears that roads that already have dozens of bins lined up outside them will be blighted with more recycling boxes. Some councils are already asking homeowners to separate their rubbish out as many as nine different ways to boost recycling. Lord de Morley, a minister in the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, DEFRA, has written to all local authorities to warn them about the new EU directive. Today in our video library, and so it begins again. The EU buffoons have only been back in the Parliament for five minutes and the wheels are coming off the cart. I still find it hard to believe that this has all come to pass, and if our discussions of the past turn out to be accurate, then this is only the beginning. In this video we see the public in Italy getting outraged with the Italian government. This protest rally in Rome turned violent as tensions and anger grew at the government and European Union's continuing policy of austerity. The terribly sad thing is that we have already seen that the austerity is not working. Sure, government spending is reduced, but because of the long evolution of growing government and state, the cuts have a directly depressing effect on the economy, which results in less commerce and less tax revenue. It's like watching a mad dog chasing its tail. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>